Asia is an epitome of world-class infrastructure and innovative technology driving leisure and business tourism in the continent. Singapore, which is often considered a gateway to Asia, is a paragon of outstanding infrastructure with excellent air connectivity, a robust public transportation system, digital connectivity, world-class hospitality and entertainment. Singapore is home to various multinational companies and sees a big influx of business tourists every year. Singapore hosted 3.5 million business visitors in 2013, an increase of 3% from the previous year which accounted for revenue generation of 5.5 billion Singapore dollars. Once you come into Singapore, everything just works. Everything works seamlessly and as a visitor, you don't have to spend your time jumping over hurdles, trying to find your way around things. You spend your time concentrating on your business. At the end of the day, bus business travel to Singapore is all about content, or what we call MICE, is all about content. Um, it's about making sure that we, that we create content that is relevant for the Asian uh, business tourist. A MICE traveller travels because they, they want to learn. They want to know what's new, what's trending, and they want to make connections. And we think that India, uh, that we think that Singapore uh, has an important role to play. It really is the hub of Asia. Singapore offers world-class dedicated mice infrastructure, and a leader in integrated mice facilities in Singapore is the Suntec Singapore International Convention and Exhibition Center. Located in the central business district of Singapore, Suntech offers multi-purpose convention, exhibition and event spaces. Boasting of the world's largest high-definition video wall, Suntech is well equipped with food courts, restaurants and retail stores all in the same vicinity. We were the first integrated development here in Singapore. And the objective was to bring together all the requirements for business in one location, which would be basically the F&B requirements, hotels, we have over 5,000 hotel rooms connected to this convention center. Of course, the convention center itself, which is 100,000 square meters of space, uh, and office towers, and one of the largest malls. Moving fast forward up to 2013-2014, uh, which we are in now, um, we re redesigned and renovated the convention center in 2012-2013. And what we did was we upgraded the center to make sure that we can meet the needs, the evolving needs of the clients uh, for today's MICE business. Another dedicated venue offering excellent MICE facilities is the Singapore Expo Convention and Exhibition Centre with its new Max Atria Convention Wing, offering 100,000 square metres of indoor and outdoor space, serving more than 8 million visitors and 800 events annually. Singapore Expo is situated in the eastern precinct of Singapore. Uh, it is in a thriving place comprising the Changi Business Park, the new university, the Singapore University of Technology and Design, many MNCs, um, SMEs. It is therefore in a prime position to leverage on these thriving ecosystem which will lend itself well uh, in terms of a variety of business events that can make use of Singapore Expo to advance their respective development agendas. To enhance its appeal as a business destination and take MICE a step further, Singapore offers integrated resorts with a comprehensive range of amenities such as hotels, convention facilities, entertainment shows, theme parks, luxury retail and fine dining offering more than 33,500 square meters of MICE space. In the past, you see, Singapore was seen more as a stopover destination for leisure travellers. Now we are seriously a mice destination. People come here not just for a couple of days, they come here for a whole week because there is so much to see and do, not just here in Resorts World and Sentosa, but the whole of Singapore. And that's been one of the big game changers. The building of these integrated resorts has totally changed the way people are looking at Singapore as a mice destination. When you look at Singapore as a hub, uh, flight connectivity is probably the best in Asia and facilities like this uh, when they exist 
is seamless travel for people attending shows like this. So organizers want to be in a, in a destination where logistics are absolutely easy for them to do. That's the biggest challenge they face, and I think Singapore does provide that to organizers. So most, most certainly, I think having mice at the heart of it is, 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 a, is a winning strategy. One of the premier properties developed as an integrated hub for business, leisure and entertainment in Singapore is the Marina Bay Precinct. The precinct features the Marina Bay Sands Integrated Resort which boasts of a luxury hotel, convention and exhibition centres, splendid entertainment and the best shopping and dining experiences in the region. The Marina Bay Sands Expo and Convention Center is a versatile exhibition and meeting venue that offers 250 meeting rooms and 2,000 exhibition booths to accommodate 45,000 delegates at a time. It's one of two integrated resorts in Singapore and, and in Southeast Asia for that matter. Um, the, it's a 2,500 room hotel. We have uh, a, a huge convention space. It's about 120,000 square meters. Um, we've got celebrity chef dining, so it's um, you know entertainment. Uh, we have a museum, uh, the Art Science Museum, which is one of its kind. It doesn't exist anywhere else, um, and so that makes it a special place because you've got so much under one roof. Another key leisure, business, and entertainment precinct for Singapore is the Sentosa Island. The integrated resort located here, Resorts World Sentosa, is Asia's premier integrated resort that has come to be known as the mice and leisure destination in itself. From luxurious hotels to popular attractions such as SEA Aquarium and Adventure Cove Water Park, it also features a unique blend of style and innovation in the form of its Resorts World Convention Center. Uh, there was a quite clear thought process behind Sentosa and it's still true today. Uh, we wanted somewhere for Singaporeans who live in a very busy city, even 40 years ago uh, Singapore was very busy, uh, have somewhere to go and let their hair down, relax and enjoy a leisure destination without having to fly somewhere, have a staycation. Um, but we also wanted to attract tourists from all over the world. I think the government wanted to uh, reinvent the tourism industry here in Singapore and they came up with the idea of these integrated resorts. It had never been done before in any part of the world so I think we're totally unique in what we have developed here. It is a truly the only integrated resort in this part of the world. Convention center, and that's a very, very important part of our business, is the uh, Compass Ballroom that we have here. Uh, it's, it's, it's something actually very, very unique because it's um, a column-free ballroom that can accommodate up to about 6,000 people for a sit-down dinner. So it's a pretty big ballroom. One of the fastest growing economies in Asia, India too is a popular business destination and offers impressive dedicated conference venues such as Pragati Medan and Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi and VM Birla Science and Technology Centre in Jaipur to name a few. Mice infrastructure in India is certainly evolving but we have a very long way to go before we catch up with the global standards in mice. Uh, to give you some examples, uh, the largest mice infrastructure in India probably would be Prakati Madan with about uh, 700,000 square feet of exhibition space. Compare that with uh, Guangzhou, Hanover, Frankfurt, which are in the region of 4 to 5 million square feet. So that just shows the capability of a destination in India to cater to a global uh, conference such as you know the mobile world conference or the auto show it's it's unlikely we'll be able to cater to something like that several convention type centers right? while it can absorb one or two very large convention centers smaller convention centers hotels and complete tourism areas can be developed frankly the land is available what the government needs is an integrated urban development plus tourism type of thinking so tourism has to be incorporated in our urban development infrastructure and planning. If that happens, I think tourism will take off. Hospitality is key to the growth of business tourism and economic development of Singapore. With rising competition and evolving consumer needs, the boutique hotel culture is fast growing in popularity in Singapore. Know Me, a luxurious boutique hotel in Singapore, features 73 elegantly designed rooms with ultra-modern facilities and room decor inspired by famous designers such as Andy Warhol and Coco Chanel. 
Nomi was actually coined as to bridge the gap between a hotel and a residence itself. When a guest enters our property, they're greeted by their name. Um, everyone knows them throughout the stay with their name itself. Um, the whole concept of Nomi was actually designed to come to a familiar friend's home, a lady's home, albeit it's well designed and well appointed. The end of the day, the rooms should be designed to suit your needs as well. The new Majestic Boutique Hotel is a classic example of New Asia hospitality and has 30 individually crafted rooms by various designers to provide a theatrical experience to its patrons. I thought it would be interesting to do a kind of hotel that just had a very different feel and had a very different lifestyle sort of focus. Um, and so really we worked with a lot of artists and it was a lot of effort, but it was a 30 room hotel, so you know, something that was manageable. But it was a lot of effort to kind of get that whole design ethos across. Popular as an eco-friendly hotel, the Park Royal on Pickering boasts of one of its kind sky gardens, reflecting pools, planter terraces and green walls, making it architecturally striking, integrated and sustainable. The amount of um, eco-friendly features and technology that's incorporated within the operational system. Uh, we have 367 rooms in our hotels and if you've gone into one of the rooms you'll notice one of the key features is the tall high floor to ceiling windows. The glass windows you see within the room itself, they are untinted and the whole point of it is to let in as much natural daylight as possible and uh, that way we reduce less reliance of course on uh, natural energy to power up the room itself. India, with its growing influx of business travellers, has world-class homegrown luxury business hotels such as Trident Hotels, ITC Hotels and Taj Hotels Resorts and Palaces to name a few that offer stellar business amenities. There has been uh, a mushrooming of, uh, of business tourism in tier 2 towns like Ahmedabad, Pune and this has been spurred also by the improved air connectivity into these towns. Now, the second thing which has happened is uh, there has been some trend towards the development of MICE infrastructure in the country. I think we have a long way to go, but something has kicked off uh, in that direction. There have been some interesting trends such as the development of uh, uh, hotel infrastructure near airports such as Del Delhi Aerocity, which has been an interesting uh, development uh, of late. Also, I think uh, what, is, what has been interesting has been the entry of uh, international hotel chains into the mid and budget segments. So historically, these were highly underserved. And today, with the entry of people like Holiday and Express, Four Points, you're seeing standardized service in the mid to budget segment as well. Since the Modi administration, you're seeing the change in the, in the, the I call it a renewed enthusiasm, because the developer are now looking inward. Previously, was say, they were thinking of uh, investing in Dubai or investing in London, but now they're saying that we want to invest in India. And it could be Delhi, it could be Mumbai, or it could be Pune. <laughs> The modern and chic Four Seasons Hotel is a popular choice amongst business travellers. It's luxury from the word go with patrons welcomed with complimentary luxury sedan airport transfers well equipped with iPads which allow online hotel web check-ins and meal order placements while being on the go. The international business traveller uh, knows Four Seasons, knows what they're about uh, from a service standpoint to a product standpoint. Uh, they've travelled and stayed in our hotels around the world in all of the major uh, business centres. Uh, so when they come into a location like Mumbai, uh, it's very important for them to have a certain reassurance of what they're going to be staying in and where they're going to be staying. Comfort and convenience is top priority here with luxurious rooms and suites, well-equipped gymnasium and spa services. This contemporary building also houses stellar MICE facilities and provides well-armed meeting and event venues. We've got about 20,000 square feet of uh, MICE facilities. Uh, two years ago we opened the mansion which comprises of two large ballrooms uh, and we've got five meeting rooms, we even have a lawn. Um, and one of the things that is, is quite unique is a kitchen area. Uh, we have a, a show kitchen uh, which is linked to a cocktail area and a dining area. So you get some very, very high powered uh, board meetings. People can have a lot of privacy in a unique environment with a chef cooking for them. Uh, and that, that does, does add a, a different twist to it. On the other side, we give you a peek into some of the world class entertainment and tourist attractions for leisure and business travelers in Singapore.
business travel is incomplete without gratifying leisure and entertainment and Singapore has much to offer to its travelers. One of the biggest attractions in Singapore is the Gardens by the Bay. Considered the world's coolest green initiatives, it houses the world-renowned solar-powered super trees, mystical cloud forest and climate-controlled flower domes with flora and fauna from the Mediterranean and semi-arid subtropical regions. The River Safari, the one and only river-themed park in Asia, features the world's biggest collection of freshwater animals and plants. Some of its biggest attractions here are the mesmerizing Amazon flooded forests, giant panda forests and the adventurous Amazon River Quest boat ride. From the Singapore perspective, we think that uh, creating a, a, a better experience that speaks to a business traveler is going to be really, really important. So for us, it's about showing the authenticity of Singapore. It's about showing the fantastic cuisine of Singapore. It's about showing all the things that you can do after hours for an event as well. Singapore offers a complete travel experience and infrastructure and innovations are designed to create compelling leisure experiences. Singapore has pioneered innovations to play host to top-notch events in Singapore such as the annual Formula One Singapore Grand Prix in September which sees street roads being converted into racetracks in the heart of the city to host the only full night race in the Formula One calendar and Asia's highly anticipated sporting and entertainment extravaganza. Another mega facility aiding the organization of mega events is the Singapore Sports Hub which houses the state-of-the-art 55,000 capacity national stadium with a retractable roof playing host to the coveted BNP Paribas WTA Finals Singapore presented by SC Global annually from 2014 to 2018. India with its rich history and culture offers business travellers a plethora of leisure activities such as local sightseeing, exploring history, art, culture and food and wine of the place or indulging in shopping and adventure activities and holds tremendous improvement potential as a compelling leisure and business destination. In order to make India a compelling tourist destination, I think uh, a couple of things need to be done. Firstly, we need to develop world-class infrastructure, uh, which is uh, comparable with the likes of uh, Singapore or China. Uh, the second thing we need to do is we need to build on the hotel capacity in the country. Today, the hotel capacity in uh, several large cities is of the same order of magnitude as the hotel capacity of India as a whole country. So we are sorely lacking in that front. Thirdly, we need to play to our strengths and we need to build on the heritage uh, options which India provides. So the infrastructure at the heritage destinations needs to be spruced up such that the experience once you get there is as rewarding as people expect it to be. After the break, we put the spotlight on how technology and innovation are becoming the growth drivers of travel and tourism in Singapore and India. With business and leisure travellers flying to Singapore and India, most stakeholders are leveraging technology to provide them with a seamless travel experience. You know, we're working on uh, getting rid of the, re the, you know, the need for someone to even go and stand at a check-in counter um, or a check-out counter. Uh, we've got kiosks that people can use to check out. Um, through the use of technology uh, that we're working on right now, people will not need to uh, interact at the check-in counter, do registrations, it'll be a seamless, smooth experience where you'd be able to go straight up to your rooms. Uh, today's world of business is truly interconnected and global. It is therefore important that in the course of any business event, they, are re they remain connected uh, on, on site as well as online. And therefore we have uh, installed a uh, high bandwidth um, wireless Wi-Fi systems uh, but not only that, it's also important that we have the right standards 
in place to ensure that every business event and any, any participant or delegate to the event uh, can be assured that they are receiving international standards. We actually introduced Apple TVs. So that's one way in which even though you're traveling and you're not at your home, you can still get ready with your tunes, you can watch your movies, you can catch up on your TV shows. You don't feel like you've actually left. Um, that was one of our main features in all of our rooms here in Nomi. We've got the Apple TV. Singapore boasts of great connectivity and has launched various tourist-friendly apps such as YourSingapore.com and Jose, which serve as the ultimate guide. Asia has become that hub of uh, innovation and travel where everybody wants to be part of the, of the Asia travel market. In the last two years, we've seen a, a, a very significant shift towards mobile. This is a global phenomenon, but it's particularly pronounced in APAC. And even today, there's a, about a billion people living in APAC with smartphones. And this accounts for 50% of the global smartphone users. And so I think this, uh, this shift towards smartphones has driven a lot of the innovation in the industry. Which I think the, the suppliers, the hotels and the airlines are investing more and more in innovation and online innovation. The big online travel agents continue uh, to innovate and improve in this space. And also the startup space is incredible. So we're seeing more and more startups uh, start online travel companies all the time, and particularly on mobile. There's a lot of new companies who are really jumping on uh, mobile devices as they should and developing uh, mobile first companies which are working really well. So for the consumer, uh, I don't think there's been a better time for travel. Technological innovation is on the upswing in India as well to aid travel and tourism. Audio Compass, a mobile travel guide, has reinvented the travel experience by bringing the destination alive with the help of a personal mobile tour guide. Haji Ali, the floating Darga. You've probably crossed Haji Ali at least a couple of times during your visit, but while most people see the bay, a lot of people miss the building halfway out in the sea. Once you download the app and launch it, uh, it automatically detects your location. Our aim is to uh, to be for you to be no more than a hundred kilometers away from a closest point of interest at this point uh, we hope to reduce that to 15 or 20 kilometers in as we grow um, so anyway like I said once you open the app uh, you have uh, the app automatically detects your location and pops up a bunch of point a bunch of uh, what we call points of interest that are close to you you simply tap on a point of interest and immersive accurate audio based content starts playing that tells you the story of that destination. Clear Trip, a leading online travel company, has introduced unique mobile platform innovations such as Expressway, way to go and Passbook to personalize one's travel experience. One of the first was Expressway where it's to, you know, save your card and swipe and pay, right? That's something that we launched I think about three and a half years back now. A few other features that we built uh, way to go was another interesting feature that we built which is essentially a multimodal search helps a consumer to figure out how to get from A to B using multiple modes of transportation not just air right but it could be a camp combination of air plus uh, rail so increasingly we are seeing a lot more traction from people who typically will book through a travel agent for their corporate travel but on their personal trip are booking through us and using a lot of the tools that are available right one of the first ones that uh, was really popular was the passbook uh, using the passbook feature on uh, Apple, this was about two and a half years back. We were the first ones in, in the country to launch it. Uh, and people don't need to print, a pass, uh, print their tickets anymore, right? You can just show that passbook at the airport and, entry, and enter the airport. Spearheading such innovative transformations is not an easy task and has met with its fair share of challenges. But we've identified the need for people to continuously remain connected for whatever reasons, whether it's business or private. And we are working closely with the uh, Singapore Tourism Board, for example, and uh, other, other entities to see if we can start expanding this concept of free, high-density, high-speed Wi-Fi across precincts, across large swaths of Singapore. Because that will again make it very compelling for visitors. Meeting the expectations of 
of a traveler who's gotten a lot more sophisticated. As I said, you know, before, a lot of it is down to how do you deliver to him the same functionality in his sort of day-to-day uh, -day life that he gets at home. And that is really tied up very much nowadays with the young travelers with, with things like smartphones um, and, and the technology that they use to kind of enable their lifestyles. Building infrastructure and augmenting innovation is a never-ending process and the future of the travel and tourism industry continues to look promising. India is a very important source market for resorts world. It's within seven hours of Singapore and that's where we are looking at. Anything within seven hours is definitely our market. And India falls very nicely into that geographical location. Uh, I think for the first couple of years, we've been focusing very much on developing the leisure business out of India. And we've been very successful at that. In fact, our Universal Studio is extremely popular with uh, a tourist from India. Now, of course, we're into, we've been open for the past four years. We're looking at expanding our Indian business and we're looking more at developing the mice business. Being a very key destination in Asia Pacific and a financial center plus, it is also a, you know, a conducive for mice and incentive meetings. So, and now that the, if you look at Singapore, the government is doing a lot of you know, investing a lot in infrastructure. Every time when you come to Singapore, you see something new. And, and that is always a good sign of development, even though the place is small, but a lot of the effort has been put with, together with the government and obviously with the uh, tourist promotion, but I think Singapore has done extremely well. Next week in this series, we'll give you a peek into the innovations, trends and opportunities in the cruise industry in Singapore and India.